Hello everyone and welcome to another video on Python programming. In this video, we will cover the topics of numeric object types and type conversions in Python. Now let's get started. Numeric object types in Python are a broad classification of objects. Plenty of common real-life applications that we associate with numerals such as arithmetic operations and calculus are done in Python using numeric object data types. There are three main types of numerals or numeric data types in Python. They are integers, float, and complex. Integers, as the name suggests, represent all integer values in Python. These can be such as 100, minus 3, 305, and so on. Floats are used to represent numerals that contain decimal points, such as 100.3, 3.9, 4.8, minus 6.8, and so on. Then there is the complex object type, which is used to represent complex numbers in Python. And this is an example of a complex number. 3 plus 7j. This is a complex number 3 plus 7j where the real component is 3 and the imaginary component is 7. All complex numbers have a real and an imaginary component and this is how we denote them. Now it's important to note that this j is a very common symbol in maths and engineering used to denote the ima imaginary portion of a complex number and it's the same in Python as well. So moving on, let's talk about Type conversion in Python. Type conversion refers to the conversion of an object from one data type to another, for example from string to an integer. And there are different types of conversions and let's go through some of them. First of all, let's consider the conversion of something to an integer. And more specifically, let's consider the example where we convert a string to an integer. So let's consider my example string to be some something called 145 and I'm storing this within a string for a reason because I want to convert a string to an integer. So as you can see I have stored this 145 within my uh, within a variable x and if I were to confirm that it is actually an integer I can use the type function and see that it is actually an integer str. Now let's convert this into an integer using the int function. So how would we use it is simply passing the int uh, sim by passing the variable that we want to convert into the int function. And as you can see, this is what I've done over here, but before this, I will also store it into another variable. All right, now let's see what's in y. Well, y gives us one, four, five, but are we sure that it's an int? We can just check it by using the type function. And as you can see, the type gives us uh, the answer int. That means that we've converted the string to an int. Interestingly, we can convert something and also specify what base we have to treat the number as. By default, when we pass something in the int function, the program or Python will treat whatever we have passed uh, within the string as something in base of decimal. But what if we were to pass something that is, well, not in a decimal? Well, we could do it like this. Now let's store y and in y, let's store. Let's do this and I will show you what this means x and I will give a comma and 8. What this tells Python is, well, I want to convert the string in x into an integer, but I want to treat whatever is in x as a number of base 8. So 145 is actually 145 in the base 8. Now when we see what's in y, we get 101, which is different to 145 because, well, 101 is actually the decimal equivalent of 145 in the base 8. Similarly, if we were to give it in the base 2, we would just replace 8 with 2 over here. Now next, let's talk about converting something to a float. Now as we know, float is just simply something that has a decimal point. So let's convert an integer into a float. How would we do that? Simply by using the float function. So if I gave 120 and I pass this integer through the float function, I should get 120.0. And these two are not the same, though they may mean the same things to us, but in for Python, 120 is an integer and 120.0 is a different object, which is a float. And this is how we convert something to a float. Now, what if we wanted to convert an integer to a string? Well, we can use the str function. We can also use the hex and the oct function if we want to convert a particular number to a hexadecimal or an octal string, respectively. Let's look at all three examples. Say I have a number 688 and I want to convert this into 
a string. I just use the str function around this. So as we know, just to confirm, let's see what the type of 688 is. This is, this should be an int as we can see. But when we pass, when we, let's say uh, we convert it into a string, 688, and let's store it into some variable, let's call it a. All right, now let's see what's an a. It gives us 688 in the form of a string, but we can confirm by checking the type of a. It is an str, so it is a string. Similarly, we can use hex if we wanted to convert an integer into its hexadecimal equivalent in the in 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 as an output of a string. As you can see, this comp this sort of this sort of complicated thing is actually telling us that we have converted 688 in terms of hexadecimals. Now, how do we read this output? This zero should not be treated as anything. It's more like a, an identifier, which says that the letter after this first zero is the base of this whole number. So it's saying that X, X stands for hexadecimal. So it's saying that 2B0 is to be treated as a hexadecimal number. And if you did basic maths, uh, you would find that the decimal equivalent of 2B0 is 688. Similarly, if I did oct, if I use the oct function for 688, it will give me the result, something like this. So again, how to read this? The first zero is to be treated as an identifier and not part of the number. What it's saying is the letter after the first or after this zero is the base of the number following these two, uh, following these two characters. So as you can see, as you can see, what's this saying is that this whole number is an oct represented by this letter O and the number itself that we are dealing with is 1260. And 1260 in octal system is the equivalent of 688 in the decimal system. So this is how we've converted a an integer in uh, an integer into a hexadecimal or a an octal string. Now, what if we wanted to convert two uh, numeric objects into a complex data object? Well, for that we can use the complex function, as you can see here. If I passed complex five and say um, say something like 3.1. Let's see what this gives us. As you can see, it gives us an uh, a complex object where uh, our real part is 5 and our imaginary part is 3.1. So what this does is essentially uh, you pass two numbers. The first one is the real component and the second is the uh, imaginary component. It combines to give you a complex number as you can see here. Now let's look at some other type conversions. The next type we will be talking about is converting something to a tuple or a set or a list. So what if I wanted to convert a string into a tuple, I will use the tuple function. And uh, as you can see over here, so let's say I have a string called random, let's call it random. All right. Now, if I want to convert this to a tuple, I will use the tuple function. As you can see over here, the output will give me tuples where each individual component of this tuple are the individual components or the individual characters of my string random. Similarly, if I wanted to convert the string to a list, I would use the list function. And this will give me a list of the individual characters of the word or the, uh, the string random. And I could do the same thing with the set function to create a set of individual characters of uh, the string random, as you can see here. So yeah, these were some of the basic Python uh, type conversions that I have shown you. As we learn about more complex data types and different object types in Python, we will learn different uh, type conversions and functions associated with them. If you enjoyed this video, do give us a like and subscribe to our channel. It helps us a lot in reaching other learners such as yourself. And once again, thanks for watching.